So in the last lecture, uh, Fields and Waves number seven, we introduced the concept of divergence, uh, which was the sourciness of magnetic field lines or the degree to which field lines emerge from or converge into a location. Uh, and this was one way to take the spatial derivative of three-dimensional functions. Um, and from that, we were able to recast Gauss's law in a form where the divergence of the electric flux density or the D field is equal to the volume charge density or rho sub V at any location. In this lecture, we're going to introduce a different type of, uh, of uh, uh, derivative, a spatial derivative that's gonna be called a gradient. And we're gonna connect that to scalar potential more commonly referred to as voltage. So this lecture is divided up into three pieces. The first, I'll introduce gradients um, and quickly give you analogy for it. In part two, we're gonna talk about how um, uh, gradient allows us to define something called potential or voltage. And in part three, we're gonna have a numerical technique that describes how you can connect a gradient with, um, um, uh, with a voltage and potential, uh, numerically speaking. All right, so starting with uh, part one, uh, on gradients. So the definition of gradient is basically going to come from this. First, let me just uh, uh, redefine the del or the grad operator, which is the derivative with respect to x in the x direction, plus the derivative with respect to y in the y direction, plus the derivative with respect to z in the z direction. The grad operator makes no sense on its own. Uh, just like a plus sign means nothing on its own until you put things around it. You have five plus four, then you know what the plus sign means. And it's the same for this operator. So we're going to find something called the gradient. And the gradient is defined if we have a scalar that's defined in three dimensions. A scalar is something like temperature or uh, pressure. Um, any of that could, could be a scalar cost. Uh, so for that, we're going to do the derivative of this uh, field V or this, uh, this scalar uh, um, V with respect to X in the X direction plus the derivative of this scalar with respect to Y in the Y direction plus the derivative of the scalar with respect to Z in Z direction. And we're going to also write that as gradient of V or grad V or del V. Uh, so again, uh, you know, a V is any scalar quantity like temperature, although really here we're going to be using it as voltage, that's defined anywhere in three dimensions. But at that location, all you have is a magnitude. You don't have a direction. All right. But the result, this uh, gradient of V is a vector. All right. Uh, now, the qualitative meaning of gradient is that it's the direction of fastest increase of V. So if you're standing at any location, so let's say you're standing at some location and you're measuring the temperature, and someone asks you the question, well, if you really want to move to a warmer spot, which direction should you go? Should you go north, south, east, west, up, down? Uh, which direction? Calculate the gradient, and then you have the answer. That's the direction you should go to cause the temperature to increase as rapidly as possible. Right? So that's the qualitative meaning of gradients. Uh, you can see this in one dimension. Right? If, if we sort of confine everything to one dimension, and I have a small little segment right here that has length delta x to it, and I call uh, the scalar on the positive side of that V positive, and I call the other side of this V negative, then the gradient of V would be equal to the derivative of V with respect to X in the X direction. There's no Y and there's no Z in this case. So that's all that the gradient would be. And this is roughly approximated as V positive minus V negative divided by um, delta V, right? Delta, not gradient. Be sure you are, uh, are careful about that symbol. The, the, the gradient is an upside down delta. Um, all right, so, so here's a delta X right here. And uh, from this relationship right here, and the connection to the gradient in one dimensions, uh, you can sort of see that 
if V positive equals V negative, that implies that the gradient of V equals zero. If V positive is greater than V negative, that implies that the gradient of V equals some positive number in the X direction. And if V negative is less than, if V positive is less than V negative, that implies that the gradient of V is some negative number in the X direction. All right, and so uh, uh, you can see if you're standing right here, uh, you would either move toward V positive or V negative, you move to whichever one is bigger than uh, the value of V where you're standing. And so the gradient tells you which direction to go. So that makes sense in one dimension, uh, but all the gradient does is it generalizes it to, to, uh, to three dimensions, all right? Uh, now, one thing that I'm, I'm not gonna derive mathematically, but you, you can show this, um, that uh, um, if any vector field satisfies this relationship that the uh, path integral around any um, circular path that returns back to the start of this vector field A along that path equals zero. If that is the case, then there exists a gradient. Right, you can, you can define a gradient. Uh, and I'll, I'll give a little more um, um, context for uh, what this means in a second. Uh, and the easiest way to describe that is to take a look at height, right? And so um, this is a, a, a topographic map. In this case, it's uh, Yosemite National Park. And uh, these lines right here represent altitude. And so, you know, these, uh, you know, this, for example, is, a, is a, a mountain right there. So you've got different lines right here that are lines of equal altitude. So if you descend, if you ascend this mountain, you're, you're basically going this way toward the peak, which is right there. Okay. Um, and so you can think about the gradient as, as the following. If you stand anywhere, stand at any location, you look around you and you try to figure out which direction is going to uh, decrease my altitude the fastest or which direction is going to increase my altitude the fastest. You'll be asking yourself a question, should I go north or should I go south? Should I go east or west? Which way should I go to make my altitude increase the fastest? Uh, then uh, the answer would be that... Um, uh, you would go in the direction of the gradient, right? So the gradient's gonna point you kind of uphill wherever you're standing. It may not point directly toward the peak, but it's gonna lead you toward the, the, uh, the peak of a mountain. So um, the gradient is gonna point uphill from wherever you're standing. If that's the case, then the gradient points in the direction you should walk, the two-dimensional direction you should walk, uh, in order to increase your altitude as much as you can, points in the direction to increase your altitude. All right, in which case the altitude is a scalar quantity. And the gradient points you in the direction that the altitude is increasing the fastest. All right. Uh, now, let me come back to that, uh, that definition that the closed integral of um, any um, of, of this, uh, uh, um, this uh, uh, vector here, A, dotted with DL. Sorry, that's a DL, not a DS. Equals zero. Let's try to make sense of that. So. What that tells us is that if I stand over, if I stand at any location and then I walk around to some path, doesn't matter what the path is, but I come back where I started and I ask the question, what's the total elevation change that I've experienced as I walk around that entire loop and came back where I started? That's what the loop here is. I came back where I started. The answer would invariably be, well, it must be zero because I ended up where I started. I, I ended up at the same altitude. So of course, if I walk around in a circle and come back, the total change in altitude is going to be zero. And so this condition right here is really just a mathematical way to state that, that um, you can define this steady notion of altitude that isn't changing with time. Uh, 
um, that I can walk around and come back where I started and I'm at the same elevation or the same altitude that I was before. Uh, and if that is the case, that is when it is possible to define altitude. If this were not the case, if you stand somewhere and you walk around, you, you, know, you meander around and you come back where you started and suddenly you're 100 feet higher than when you started, then the notion of altitude doesn't make any sense. You can't really define altitude. Um, and so this condition is required in order for there to exist an altitude to begin with, uh, which means that this condition must be true in, in order for there to exist the idea of a gradient um, from which you can get your, uh, your electric field. So that's what gradient is. In the next section, we're gonna actually directly connect it to potential or voltage.